All right, so you can see here that I'm in Google Sheets and I'm going to use Google Sheets for this because that's what we're going to use for 244B um, because it's easier for us to share information as we work on this report together. Um, so we are going to make a graph. This video is to talk about making a, a bar graph that will um, evaluate the relationship between two categorical variables. So as a reminder, this is from the Machiavellianism data set, and I selected two categorical variables for a cross tabulation. We're looking at gender by education. And we have percentages here that represent the percent of men who had less than high school, percent of men that had high school, percent of men who had a university degree, and percent of men that had a graduate degree. And then the same thing for women and people who identified as other. So here you can see that this, I calculated the sum here as a double check that these are correct. Um, and so this is a, this 100% refers to all of the males in the sample. And I'm using percentages because it's a better way to represent the distribution ac across these uneven groups. So we had a lot more men in this sample. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these tables here. I'm going to insert a chart and it's going to automatically give me um, a column chart, which actually works just fine. So that's one option. Let me make this a little smaller. Um, so I have a column chart here and you can see that it compares uh, the different high school, high school or less than high school, high school, university degree, graduate degree, the different um, categories of education. So this is saying, though, that um, of men, we have less than 50% who fall into this high school ca or category, same thing for women, it's about the same. So this is looking at the percentage of each group within the schools. So we could do that. And just to show you on here, you can switch rows and columns. So then this tells us instead the percentage of um, less than high school, high school, university degree, graduate degree by gender. So this shows you how they're distributed across gender. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, I'll let you make that decision as you create your own version of this um, for the, our assignments. And um, we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages of each. So it's also gonna depend on your research question. Um, so how you edit this so that it can be APA style. Uh, first of all, when you click into it, it's gonna to go to this customized over here. We would not have a label in our actual chart for APA. So I'm gonna delete that. I do need to add my axis titles though. So I'm gonna say horizontal axis title and my horizontal title is gonna be education level. And then I'm gonna add a vertical access title, and that is going to be, um, this is my percentage. And so notice that this is our percentage, um, and then we have our legend here for male and female, right? So I wanna leave, I wanna leave that as is. I want these numbers to accurately be reflected here. Uh, I could edit my title, font size, my colors, any of that information. I can add um, my data labels. So if I wanted to, ooh, that's dirty and sad. Um, I could add data labels if I felt that was helpful. Um, in this type of graph, it doesn't really work that well. Uh, I will show you in a different version of this. You can change your legend. So we could change where that is. Um, so it positioned it auto, we could put it on the bottom. Um, we could put it on the right. I actually like that. We're going to leave it on the right. Uh, you need to also remove your grid lines. So if you click on the lines, it'll take you to it, or you can just go to grid lines and ticks. So I'm going to take it off major grid lines. I'm going to add major ticks for my um, for my vertical here. I could add my minor grid lines if I want. Oh no, not minor grid lines. Sorry, major minor ticks. I could change my tick length. Man, here we go. Minor ticks. Um, so I could do that to make it a little bit more clear if I wanted to. Uh, and then I'm going to swap this for horizontal access. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on major ticks so that I have my 
um, line here, my axis line, I'm going to change my tick position to none so it gets rid of that line that sticks straight up. So this is looking better. Um, and seventh edition for APA, you can have colors. So I'm going to leave the colors. It looks a little McDonald's-y right now. It probably wouldn't print that great, but because this is just a demonstration, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so other, other things I could do. I, I could have this be my graph, right? So here's one version. And we can see how it represents the information. When you put it into a report, you would have it so that above it, you would have um, figure one, and then below it, you would have your title. Um, so that would be in your actual report. You follow seventh edition for that. And then let's copy this. Make another one. This down here. Okay. So another way we could deal with this, um, if I wanted to swap it out, I could. So notice that I could do like this. Um, so this would actually allow me if I wanted to include some data labels, um, I could do that a little bit more easily. So I can add data labels here and you can see now that we have our data labels. Um, I would have to go through and do the same thing where I, add back my lines and remove the lines that I'm not supposed to have, uh, like that. Take out the title that it insists on adding. I would need to update my horizontal axis um, and I would you know, need to change, um, change the size of, of what's available here. So I could, I could change this axis, make this bigger. I'm not going to worry about this right now. I just want to demonstrate again how this works. So um, this, these are a couple different options. Um, another way that you can show this would be, what am I doing? Paste. There we go. So another way that I could represent this information, I could actually use these um, stacked bar charts or 100% stacked bar charts. So uh, we have this option. And so this is gonna show you by high school, this would work better as if we switch the rows and columns, right? So we can see the difference between men, women, and other for education. Um, and so you could again, go into your customize and add some data labels. You can move where they are. So I can move the data label to uh, like the center, uh, which messes with this one. Um, I could go in and just delete those individual ones because they're kind of unnecessary. So we don't have anything there, right? So I'm just gonna double click twice. There we go. So this is another way that we could um, represent this information. So what you typically want to do is, and we'd have to change this label. Let me change this. There we go. Um, what you typically want to do when you're deciding what graph is appropriate is you're going to take your report purpose as a whole, and you should really decide how you're going to represent your information and be consistent, be consistent with colors and representation. Different graph types might be appropriate. Um, you just don't want to change the graph type for no reason because you want your uh, readers to be able to understand and follow your information. So what um, I'm going to ask you to do for this assignment is to compute a cross tabulation, um, interpret it, and make a graph of some kind. And I'd like you to use your best judgment um, and just do what you can with it. So I hope this has been helpful, and I will see you soon.